Good morning again. Good morning. This morning, if you would turn in the, your copies of God's Word to Romans 12. Romans 12. And uh, as you're turning there, you know, as, as, as you look at Romans and you get the, the chapter 12 of Romans, it really is where the boots hit the road, in a sense, for Christians. You know, uh, up until here, when we get to Romans 12, it kind of tells us what we should be doing. Let us get into this. Romans 12, if you would stand, and I'm going to read the entire chapter of God's Word, and then we'll have prayer. Romans 12. Scripture says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one to another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Our ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching. For he that exhorteth on exhortation, and he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, and he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dispensation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Not soft one business, forever in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which are persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense no man evil for evil, and provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peacefully with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place in the wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him, and if he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, as we look here at this scripture that really tells us the conduct of the church, of the body, Lord, help us this morning to learn what your Holy Spirit would have us to take from this. Lord, help us to just do so in a manner that we can tell others, that we can share with others. And if we need to make corrections in our life, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would guide us in doing so. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Please, please be seated. You know, as we look here at this scripture, at this scripture here this morning, I mentioned as I was opening, is this was really where kind of where the boots hit the ground in a sense, as you get into Romans. And it's a beautiful chapter, but it's also a chapter sometimes when we're Christians that we look at, we can refer back to what are we supposed to be doing, and it tells us a lot of what we're supposed to be doing. So it's very important as we look at this chapter this morning because you know a lot of times, I know in my life, I mentioned this morning, I didn't feel good. A lot of times we feel stressed. We may feel busy and tired, and it may describe our lives. You know, but... In this fast-paced world that we live in, we can sometimes lose sight upon what we should be doing. You know, this morning in Sunday school, Russ touched a little bit on this. He touched on a, something called a relationship. And if you're here this morning and you're saved, know this, you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Right? If you're, if you're here this morning and you do not know Him, you never place your faith and trust in Him, you do not have a relationship with Him. You may pray, you may read His Word, you may do all manner of things, but until you ask Jesus to save you and He comes into your heart, you have to ask Him to do so. You have to choose to do that. He's waiting. 
He's waiting. He wants to have that relationship with you. So it's important as we look at this chapter this morning that our relationship with God is our highest priority. It has to be the highest priority. God always has to be here. You know, a lot of times, a lot of times what we'll say to ourselves, and I find myself, I find myself, well, this, this, I've got to do this, right? But a lot of times I put other things before my relationship with God. And it's not what we need to be doing. It has to be our first priority. We know why Jesus came to this world. He came to save the lost. That's why He came to this world. That's why He came to, to be that salvation for us. You know, uh, over this last week, you know, me and Jen had some conversations as you travel and go down the road. And, and, and we, we were kind of talking yesterday. And, and we were talking about, you know, the Jewish people. You know, why do the Jewish people no longer practice sacrifices? And why, why did I, this has been on my mind because the other night in a conversation last week, Jenny mentioned this article where, and I think it was Detroit, Michigan, where a, a suburb up there had voted that they can now have animal sacrifices. And they sacrificed for some type of Muslim holiday or whatever it is. I'm not sure, but it's been going through my mind for whatever reason we had this conversation as we were going down the road and, and I said, Jenny, Google why, <laughs> you know, you're going down the road, you didn't have any books, why Jewish people no longer sacrifice, right? So she Googles it, it comes back, and there's some reasonings. Really, there's no real reasoning for it. Because there has to be a blood sacrifice, right? We know as Christians, who is their sacrifice? It was the precious blood of Jesus Christ that atoned for our sins. Right, so I, and I'm not down in Jews. We need to be in pray, prayer for them. But listen, it is through His precious blood that our sins are atoned for. And it is a precious thing. So as, as we think of, of, of the reason that He came, as He came was for you and for me, that there might be a way of salvation, that there would be a final atoning for on the cross, he finished it. And we need to be in prayer that the Jewish people would turn to Jesus. That we would turn to Him and repent and ask God to forgive them. And He will be. He will forgive them. But a relationship is important. That's the reason He came. You know, when we are saved, we become part of the family of God. We become part of His family. Here today in our church here in Washington, on this little hill here, we have a congregation. We are a family, a church family. It's not the building, folks. It's not the building. What a beautiful building God has given us. But look around you. This is our family. This is our church. You know, there was a, a few years ago, there was an a, 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 a article in a paper in, in Canada. And there was a windstorm came into this town. And in the town, there was a little church. And the article said this. It said it, re it, it, it reported the effects of the recent storm which had swept over the town. It says, we are glad, said the article, to announce that the windstorm which blew down the congregational church did no serious damage to the town. Now, as I looked at that and I think about that, now you can go two ways at that, right? One, it didn't mention any members being hurt, but maybe their many place got destroyed. Right? If a wind comes and blows down our church here, it's a building. We are the church. Right? It's, it's us that is the church. You know, the church is a visible presence of the body of Christ in our world today. A lot of times I think the world is missing it with a beautiful, there's nothing wrong with beautiful buildings. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with them. But it's the people inside that's important. And the actions and, the, and what we're doing inside and our relationship with Jesus Christ. Because we know that we're living in a changing culture. Listen, we may have to go back to the times in the, when the New Testament church started where they didn't have buildings. Where you met in your homes. We may have to go back to that before it's over. We're seeing a changing culture. America is becoming more and more pagan as it turns from God. We're rejecting 
absolutes. You know, statistics say that two out of three Americans no longer believe in absolutes. They no longer believe it. Many in the church no longer believe it. Listen, our foundation of, of what our teachings are, are, are the, we're turning totally around. Some of the things 20 years ago I would have thought we would never be discussing, we're doing it today. It's actually scary. It's scary some of the things, sometimes I, I didn't think I could be surprised by things anymore, but I'm surprised at times at some of the things that are going on. But we see a decline in morals, we see an increase in cults and materialism and humanism and many false religions. And some of those false religions are within our own denominations. People are preaching things that are not in the Word of God. Russ mentioned one this morning. There are certain things that people just they want to add to it or they want to take away. The Word of God is, is what we have to go back to. You know, our church is being challenged. Not just this church, but all churches are challenged. And we're being influenced by the Word. Or for, we're being influenced by the world and we need to turn to the Word. You know, let me share with you in, in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. Let me flip back here. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. I'm going to get back there and I have it marked. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 7. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, tra traitors, hating, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, and having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and leave captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now what is the knowledge of the truth? The knowledge of the truth is Jesus Christ and our need for Him. You know, there's a, as, as, as we uh, uh, drive around and, and you drive throughout your day to wherever you go, you see all kinds of churches. Sometimes I wonder, are they preaching truth in that church? Are they preaching from what the Word of God would say? Are they preaching that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life? Are they watering it down? No one wants to offend somebody anymore. It's awful to be offended. I don't like my toes stepped on. The Word steps on my toes all the time. The Bible is meant to be offensive. Amen. This Bible is a warning to mankind. There are many warnings in the Bible. It's God gave us what we need in the Bible to live lives to bring Him glory. That's what He gave it to us for. It's warnings, and we need to heed those warnings. But if we never read it, we never pick it up, and we never ask for the teaching of the Holy Spirit, or we don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ, we're not going to get it. We just aren't going to get it. Our nation's founders, folks, our nation was founded upon the words in this Scripture. And the Constitution that we so will defend to her the bottom of anything we can. We'll defend it. It is only adequate for people who believe in God, who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Otherwise, people just take advantage of it. So we need to think of those things and this, this changing uh, of our culture and the challenge the church is under. You know, we cannot accept the world's view of morality. We cannot. The view that we have in morality has to come from this Word. It can't come from what we feel. It can't come from what we, our, our, our heart is telling us because we have wicked hearts, folks. Our heart will tell us all manner of things. This kind of is our check. Compared to the way we feel, 
to what the Bible says. Sometimes I feel that I'm doing the right thing, but when I turn to Scripture, I find that that's not the right thing. And I have to adjust what John Edwards thinks to what God says. And are we doing that in our lives? We also think about our acceptance of the world's methods for doing things. It is never okay to tell something, somebody that something is right when it's wrong. We cannot do that. And the church is doing that. We have to stand for what the Bible says, no matter the consequences. And it's coming. There's, there's consequences coming. You know, do we do it out of vindictiveness or hate? No, we do it out of love. If we love our neighbors, we're going to tell them the truth. We have to love them enough to be able to understand that we may lose their friendship by telling them the truth. Now, I'm not talking about beating them up with the Bible. I'm not telling them that. I'm talking about praying for them. I'm talking about sharing the truth with them and not agreeing with, with what the world is teaching them. We're being challenged you know, Scripture tells us the impact that the church should have in the world. Let's turn to Matthew. If you want to turn with me to Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Let's read 13 and 14. Scripture says, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his favor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is... Thenceforth, good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden underfoot of men. And it goes on in 14 to say, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. We are to have influence, right? It's important that we understand that we're called to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. I have to think in my own life, in my own walk. I'm not always the salt of the earth and I'm not always the light. That's my fault. Because I know one who is. And I know one who has the power to help me if I just turn to him and have that relationship with him and stay firmly focused on him. Thing is, is we have so many distractions that are pulling us away. Tremendous amount of distraction. We also are commissioned in Matthew 28. We're commissioned by the Lord to share the gospel. And it's just not certain people. It's all of us. If you have placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, as we turn to Matthew chapter 28, 19 and 20, very familiar uh, passage of Scripture. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now Jesus Christ, when He says amen here, He says all things He's commanded us. A lot of times we want to pick what we want to share. Right? We want to, sometimes we want to make the effect a little less light. We don't want to necessarily drive one away. We have to share the truth with our families, with our neighbors, out of love for them. You know, as we think about the importance of the church in the world, the importance of the church is not what it used to be. See, people don't have time to come to church anymore. they got too many other activities. Now, if you go back 50, 60, 70, 100 years ago, the church, this church here, uh, would have been a beacon really on the hill because this is where people would have met to discuss things, would have met, and all kinds of, it was a social, more of a social type atmosphere. Now, whether they were there to, to worship the Lord or just be part of the social, I don't know. I wasn't here 100 years ago. But I can tell you things have changed today. Now, don't take long to, to figure out that I'm kind of uh, illiterate in, in, in the internet and, and all that. 
And that's my own fault. I'm a slow learner, but there's a tremendous amount of opportunity in those that have Facebook accounts, those that have, help me out, Twitter, or all those different things, I don't have them. Now sometimes I'm kind of negative toward that stuff. That's because of my, my ignorance. But there's a tremendous amount of opportunity in those platforms to share Christ. And there's a lot of people out there sharing it. So don't think when I'm a little negative on those things, I'm negative because of my understanding of them and negative because of the temptations that are there that I see the possibilities. But the possibilities are boundless to sharing the gospel there. But know this, there is openings there are two temptations that you're going to have to be pushing away and you've got to stay firmly focused on Jesus. But the priority of the church is to worship God. Right? And the purpose of the church is to carry out the work of God. And the passion should be to win the lost to Christ. You know, that's what we should be about. That's what our church is about. You know, we have a wonderful congregation here. We have a congregation of people who all, all of you are working. And I know all of you are praying. And continue to work and continue to pray. It's not about numbers, folks. It's about what's in our hearts and what we're doing. And if we can just touch one person, just plant that seed. We're being about His business. As we think about the Christian and, and his or her church, we are to follow the shepherd. Who is the shepherd? Jesus Christ. That is our shepherd. We're to follow him and what his word says to us. Why? Because his lordship requires it. He has to be here. And in my life, I'm sad to say a lot of times I don't do it. Not only does He deserve it, but His sacrifice. Think of His sacrifice. As I think of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, one who I go to many, many times a day, sometimes every hour, sometimes I just talk to Him going down the road. He deserves it. And His love and our love for Him should compel our service and our sacrifice for Him. If we love Jesus, we're going to be about His business. You say, well, just because I'm not serving Him doing this and that doesn't mean I don't love Him. You, love, you spend the time in the things that you love to do. There's nothing wrong with fishing. I'd like to catch some fish. I like to eat fish. I like to eat you and tell, but look at me. But there's a time and place for everything. We're also, as a church, we're to have fellowship with the saints, right? Scripture tells us, Hebrews 10, 25, you know, it's a, it's a very familiar passage of Scripture too. Hebrews 10 and verse 25, if I can get to it. Got it marked, but I got so many tabs that I can't get to it. 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Lift up one another. Exhort one another. Encourage one another in your jobs, in your families, in your homes. Because I think that the day is fast approaching. And if our thoughts are on exhortation and building up, it aren't, is it going to be in the tearing down? Right? Oh, that I could draw some of the things back that's come out of these lips. <laughs> right? But once they're out there, they're there. Right? Oh, that we could draw them back. Everyone in this building's had your feelings hurt at some point in time or another. We all have, right? Has Jesus Christ ever hurt your feelings? I can tell you we've lost the loved ones at times. 
I've been angry with God at times. I say, Lord, why? Why did that have to happen? Or why am I going through this? But then, Holy Spirit convicts me. And I have to turn to Him. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive my lack of belief and my lack of faith. And He forgives me. And He encourages me and I go on. We also know that every Christian is spiritually gifted. Every Christian is spiritually gifted. In 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11, if you'd turn with me to 1 Corinthians 4, 12 to 11, 4 to 11. 12, 4 through 11. Scripture says this. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of ministrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For the one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to, uh, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh the one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Now, it's been just a second. In verse 7, it says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now, listen, we're all given spirits. Or, or we're given these gifts. We have to use them. We're given them, but we have to use them. Now, we have to find out what they are. And there's, you can pray about it. You can ask someone close to you. You can ask a, a person that has been a mentor unto you, someone that knows you, and they can share with you some of the gifts that you've been given. A lot of times we don't recognize them. A lot of times we never use them. But pray about your spiritual gifts. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. If you are still doubting, go to a trusted friend and talk about your spiritual gifts. God is in control of all things. This church right here is like my, my hand. You take the thumb away, you still can move around. But it's not full, right? Unless all the pieces of that hand are working. Now I only have five of these, and there's a lot more than five people in here, right? Listen, we all are working for the glory of God. It's important to understand we all are a digit here. It's important to understand that God has brought us here. You're not here by chance. Listen, if you think that you're in this church building by chance this morning, you aren't. You may have chose to get in your vehicle and come here this morning, but God has put you in this congregation. And there's a reason that we're all here. Let's exhort one another. Let's edify one another. Let's praise the Lord Jesus and work toward what he would have us to do in his word. We're to serve one another. Every one of us is of the same importance to the body of Christ. You know, I get the privilege to come and stand before you and preach God's word. Notice I said privilege. It's a privilege to stand because I'm telling you, if you knew me, X number of years ago, 
You would have said, there's no way. He's too backwards to be able to do that. I take no pride in it. I'd rather be sitting out there. I'll just be honest with you. Listen, it's a privilege to be in the kingdom of the Lord. You know, as, as we think uh, about what I've discussed, what the Word has, has revealed unto us this morning in Romans 12 and some other scripture, we have to understand that Jesus is the light of the world. Each believer is a vessel in which the light of Jesus shines through. The question we have to ask as, I, as, as we come to the end of this service is, is how bright is your light shining? It's kind of like the other day. I had to, uh, I've got a, a, a dimmer switch in our in our uh, at our kitchen table. It's been there since we bought the place, and the lights kind of go, you know, they dim, right? So uh, had to replace a light bulb or two, and went to Walmart and found some lights. It says dimmable lights, but they're they're uh, daylight lights, and they're so bright so bright is our light shining or we got it dimmed back let your light shine as for us as you come as only comes we'll have an invitation let us pray our father in heaven as we close our service Lord Lord we're thankful for each and every member that you've given here us here at this church we're thankful for all that serve, those that pray. Lord, we pray that you would reveal to us our, our spiritual gifts if we don't know what they are. Lord, that we would seek to use those gifts for your kingdom and for your glory. Not for ours, but for yours, dear Lord. Give us a boldness to help one another, to serve and to love. Let people see the light that's exuding from us. Not anything that we've done, but what you do, Lord. Lord, if there be one or one's here that's never placed their faith and trust in you, that they don't have a relationship where they can come to you with any need or any want or any care, Lord, we know that you're here this morning among us. We know that you're standing with your arms outstretched wanting to save that person but they have to choose it Lord we thank you dear Lord for this opportunity that you give us again this day to worship you to lift up songs of praise and worship unto you Lord we pray that you continue to tarry that you tarry that we might share the gospel with others and that they might come as we have this song of invitation, if there be ones or ones here that need to settle something, Lord, that they would be honest with themselves. For you see what's in the hearts of man, and that they would submit to that, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.